Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Uh, this is the time of year that we're hoping to see scenes like this at our hummingbird feeders and that is the babies are fledging and they're getting out starting to show up at feeders and you get actually for one of the rarest of things you get to see more than one hummingbird at your feeders this time of year. Sometimes you get to see several whenever the, the young ones are out there they don't know the routine yet they don't know to chase each other or uh, and be defensive but you know, an adult male and adult female can spoil the party and come in and run them off. And they're fattening up because they're getting ready for their, their journey south. And, and But the young, they're the ones who tend to show up at feeders in multiple numbers and, and you have a lot of them and it's pretty cool. But there can be a spoiler uh, to that party this time of year. And let's see, we get this over here. And this is what we can get. Yes. Bees can be a problem at, hum at, at hummingbird feeders and at oriole feeders um, this time of year. I, I, I got a call yesterday about bees on his jelly. You know, there's nothing you can do about bees on your jelly. That uh, my advice this time of year: the orioles are all but gone. The young, there's some still you have some young hanging around, and we'll get some migrants to the area. But the jelly season is is pretty much over. If you've got bee problems on your jelly, just take the jelly down. Just bring it in and clean it up, um, and then maybe run the bees off and then put it back out. But later, if you see migrant orioles coming through, but there's no way to keep bees out of jelly. They're just, they just haven't seen the design that that it makes that possible and I don't know anybody's working on it. So the, the good news is the oral season is pretty much over when you know, for the jelly so it's safe to go ahead and bring that in. Now hummingbird feeders you're just getting started to the best time, season for hummingbird feeders. August and September are the best months and that's when bees can, these honeybees can be uh, the biggest problem. And I don't want you to think that the, and, 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 we were just talking about the the bee allergy. If you have a bee allergy, um, and you can get really sick, have to go to the hospital, and think, you know, like that kind of reaction from a bee sting, then don't feed hummingbirds because you know there the chances are that you're going to get bees around a hummingbird feeder. I've never been stung by a bee near my hummingbird feeder. They are uh, the honeybees are very docile and they're not territorial. You're not you know disturbing their nest or anything when they're at a feeder, but. I wouldn't risk it if you have a health-threatening issue with bees. So, um, but one of the things we want to get going, I want to make clarify before we get started into this too much, is the difference between a bee and a wasp, because the bees are super beneficial. Uh, the honeybees, and well, fact here, honeybees are not native to this country, um, but they they're, they're so well established, and of course they're so important to pollinating, and and of course honeycombs and things like that. Um, uh, but bees are fuzzy. See how, if you can see in this picture how fuzzy looking they are, they, and of course that's for collecting pollen on that fuzz and then spreading it to the next flower and to the next flower. Um, the one that you don't want are wasps or yellow jackets. And yellow jackets like sugar water as well. And these are predatory wasps. These are not pollinators. These are uh, predators on, and they are important predators on some agriculture pests. So they're not, it's not that you, we, we can kill all the well, yellow jackets, we don't want to do that, but we don't want yellow jackets around our feeders. And they do like sweet, sugary water, and occasionally you will get those on a hummingbird feeder, but you won't get the scene that we just saw before. You're not going to get a swarm of bees, uh, I mean a swarm of yellow jackets on your hummingbird feeder, whereas a swarm of bees, once the hive finds a, a, a good source of uh, nectar or food like, like like sugar water then they're going to be all over it so we've got bees wonderful wasps pretty nasty so uh, these guys uh, so how do we avoid this how can we uh, prevent this problem from ever happening well you never say never and you never say always i know you've heard me say that before in my uh, in my talks or when you're dealing with wild animals but what we're going to talk about are some of the ways that you can really uh, help prevent this issue from happening and the first off is just the selection of your feeder. Um, most, you know, pre prevalently on the market are a lot of the bottle type gravity fed hummingbird feeders. And that means that the sugar water is right at the tip, at the opening, and there's many different kinds over there. 
And the uh, and it doesn't matter which one we're talking about here, but if it's a bottle style or gravity fed hummingbird feeder, the bees have their little proboscis that they they feed with, and they it's not very big, but it can get to that sugar water right at the tip of these bottle fed hummingbird feeders, and that alone makes them very uh, uh, easy for them to feed from. Now, people have these the bee guards on a lot of hummingbird feeders, but people all the time are going, wait a minute, the bees are still out there primary reason for that is is when that hummingbird sticks his bill into that feeder and it pulls the feeder after he's drank he sticks it with his tongue and he laps it out sugar water falls on this bee guard and the bees are licking up that off of the bee guard so they that's why bee guards are not as super effective as as one might think they are by the name the way to and your feeder selection, that's why we always recommend the saucer type hummingbird feeders. Aspect is our favorite company, you know that, we've talked about them a lot. But the, the saucer type hummingbird feeders, you can fill them only about half full around here, up to about half full, and then the bees, proboscis, can't reach the sugar water down in there. Whereas the hummingbird's tongue, which is twice as long as this bill, can reach the bottom of this feeder all day long. And remember, hummingbirds lap like a dog. They do not suck like a straw. They lap like a dog. And that's how their tongue darts down in there and it brings up that sugar water to their bill. So yes, occasionally there can be some sugar, residual sugar drip out here on the outside of the flower and a bee might get a little bit of that, but it's not a, a big source for them to attract a bunch of them. Uh, so you may occasionally see a bee out here on, on like one of these feeders. But that's not typical. Now these newer feeders that we have, we got in from Arizona, are claimed to be the best anti-bee hummingbird feeders on the market. And this is the first year we've had them, so we don't have a ton of local expertise. But these little holes are, and again, you can same mass concept as the aspect hummingbird feeders. You only fill it about half full, or maybe a little bit over half full, and then the bees proboscis can't get down in there. So. Great anti-bee hummingbird feeders is your very, very first solution. Now, how about those who have hummingbird feeders already and they don't want to buy a new hummingbird feeder? What are some of the tricks that we can do to help discourage uh, the hummingbird, I mean, bees in those hummingbird feeders? Well, there's a lot of home remedies out there. I've heard, you know, a, a dab of peppermint oil around the top of the flower, around uh, here and there. The bees don't like that. Does it work? I don't know. I, I, I use the aspect, so I don't have, I don't know if that works or not, but I've heard that recommended many times. I've heard of people who wash their hummingbird feeders out to, outside their hummingbird feeder here with a uh, strong vinegar water uh, solution and then don't rinse it terribly well. Uh, now the inside of the bottle they rinse and do everything right, but on the outside to leave that kind of that vinegar smell to it and that seems to discourage uh, the bees. Does it work? You know, if you want to try that, you possibly can. What I have done at my house whenever I had, one spring I had a really bad bee problem. I must have had a hive, uh, you know, really, really close to the house because it was all year long. Usually it's not till now that the bees become a problem, but that year I had a lot of bees is I had a sacrificial lamb hummingbird feeder. And that was one of the bottle types that I had. And I filled it, I mixed the sugar water in there stronger, like three to one and kind of sweet. And then I hung it out on the far end of my deck. And then I used the four to one in my humming, regular hummingbird feeders. And the hummingbirds were using this and the bees would just swarm over that sacrificial lamb feeder. And what I would do is I would just take that in at night when there were no bees on it, change it out, put it back out so they were ready the next morning. So that was the can't beat them, join them attitude because I don't want to kill bees. Their bees are so important to us. I just want to be safe around them. Now yellow jackets, again, we're back to that, that, that problem. The, the yellow jackets are nasty creatures in that they hurt terribly when they sting and they uh, and if, if they, you've got a problem with those I have personally set up uh, yellow jacket traps to trap them whenever they they got to be a, a problem and, I, and it's rare it's only been happened a couple of times in my life but um, we used to use it at our science museum we had um, trash cans around the drink machines and the kids, uh, you know, would dump about half of their drink left and they'd 
throw it in the trash can so it always has all this sticky sugar water around that would attract the yellow jackets. And, and of course we couldn't have kids getting stung at the, at the science museum so what we would do is we set up two liter bottles with the sugar water in the bottom of it and a little bit of Vaseline on the inside of the neck and put those out by the trash cans and it would trap the, the yellow jackets in there. Now there's, there's commercially available uh, yellow jacket traps as well. So those are things that you can do to help uh, find a solution to if you do have a bee or yellow jacket problem around your hummingbird feeders because it's really getting ready to be fun. You know, that every year the, that, that late date for hummingbirds in our state it gets later and later. We, you know, it used to be when I first got here in Missouri in the, in the early 90s, if it was, you saw a hummingbird pass the mid of or September, that was rare. Now, every year we get reports, you know, the first week of October, even into the 10th, 14th of October last year. So, um, you know, the, the good season's just ahead of us. August, September are the best months for hummingbirds. So get ready for it. Keep that nectar changed. And if you have a bee problem, remember, there are solutions and ways to get around that. So really good topic for a program. Thanks for the idea. Please send in more uh, requests for programs. That really helps us. We, Like I said, we want to talk about what you want us to talk about. So um, thank you for joining in. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.